All right, so we've been working through this projectile problem, like an object shot out of a cannon, making its parabolic arc. And uh, we've listed out all the various types of components that we have. And we went through formulas here in order to figure out um, our time component and how it needs to be two times the time that we worked out because we initially worked the upward thing and then the down. So we know it had to be twice that. <clears throat> and ultimately, uh, our goal is to know what's the range of this projectile shooter. How far will it shoot? And so range is the term for the distance in the x direction that this thing ends up from its starting spot on level ground. <clears throat> so there's a way that you can do that. The range is really just, uh, remember there's no... Uh, acceleration on this so a distance is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times the time now we've been using specific terminology here so we'll say x direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times time and then if we substitute from the other side of the paper we know that the thing the the projectile goes up and then it comes down and we have this time factor right here, two times uh, V zero Y over G. So the range in the X direction is the initial velocity in the X direction times two times V zero Y over G. <clears throat> Simple enough, right? Or you could rearrange that just a little bit more and get that the x in the r direction of the range is equal to 2 times v0x times v0 in the y direction all over g. Same thing, just looks a little bit different, but the algebra works out the exact same on it. <clears throat> all right, so there is one other formula that you can do if you put this entire thing together. Now, if you just start from, this involves you finding out the velocity in the X direction and the velocity in the Y direction, but we can use just the velocity, the outright velocity, not the velocity in the um, X direction. As long as we uh, work our angle into this and there's a way to do that. So let's just walk through it. So we know the initial velocity in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity times the cosine of theta. And we also know that the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity times the sine of theta. So in our formulas, anywhere where we see this v0x or v0y, we can substitute in these terms that we've got here. So let's go ahead and just use that range formula. XR equals 2 times V0X times V0Y all over G. And we'll substitute in. So it's 2 times V0 cosine theta times V0 sine theta all over G. And again, Here's the V0x, and all we did was we substituted in the V0 cosine theta right there. <clears throat> and we can do just a little bit of uh, algebra again to get this, and we'll just keep going. So we can pull the V0s out of there, and we can say it's 2 times the initial velocity squared times cosine theta times sine theta all over G. And you can stick with that formula if you like, um, but we can do one more little step here and use a, a trig identity. If you've had those, we'll do a little more arranging and we'll say, look, uh, let's set it up like this. Let's go V zero squared and then two cosine theta, sine theta over G. And now we've got a little uh, 
relationship uh, that ends up making it look like this. And that uh, trig identity is that two cosine theta sine theta equals sine of two theta. So if you've had a trig class and you remember that two cosine theta sine theta is equal to sine of two theta, you can just substitute this in and then you've actually got a pretty handy formula that you derived from all of the equations that you've done previously.